car audio, etc. is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. <laughs> Look at it, what it looks like. The photos I took a while ago will be a bit better, but here you go anyway. It's hard to see with the glare of our lights, I know, but I'm kind of set in there from underneath. Put this thing back on. Okay. One last look at it from underneath before I shut this all up. You guys won't be able to see it, but I've got the GoPro at my sort of head height from here. And I can barely just see the uh, subwoofer sticking out the bottom there. So visually, that's turned out quite, quite good. Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Car Radio, etc. I know, it's been ages since I uploaded. Two reasons. One, I went on that, I went on that sort of not holiday, but I, I had a break for a week. So that was that. And this week, there's been just very little for me to be able to film. But I did tell you guys I was going to film that subwoofer once when I um, put it back in this car. So that's what I'm doing for you today. And might as well have a catch up as well. Like, shall you, you know, catch up with you guys what's going on, what's in the future sort of stuff. But to start with, let's do some testing and see how the subwoofer sounds. I, so I tested that. Uh, okay, so you guys probably want to know what happened with the, uh, subwoofer and amp so basically what happened with the um, subwoofer and the amp that was originally in this car um, the subwoofer was the thing that had the fault in it it had a short between positive terminal and the chest and the basket of the subwoofer as I had discovered um, in that video which basically meant that the subwoofer output from the amplifier was going out of the positive and then basically shorting straight to ground rather than going through the voice call of the subwoofer and then back to negative which is ground so as a yeah so basically as opposed to getting a one ohm load on it it essentially got no load whatsoever so direct short put lots of um strain on the fets and everything inside the amp and unfortunately the amps for whatever reason we, that is still yet unknown 
the amps protection circuits didn't kick in. It's a really, really funny situation. Grant and I were talking about the odds of it ever happening. The odds of us getting a subwoofer, which, which has a fault in it that you wouldn't have come across unless you had mounted it to the parcel tray like I did. So that's a really, like, low odds thing to happen. If that had, sub had gone in a box, it would have been no problem. And B, an amplifier, which for whatever reason, still yet unknown, protection circuits were just asleep at the time and they didn't kick in and protect the amp so a, a dodgy subwoofer killed an amp while its back was turned essentially both by a very good brand and I'm, it's so good that they were the same brand as well because we got to send them back to the same place as like a pair that had faulted god imagine if they were different brands and they had to be sent to different places and everyone would be like well we well you guys have broken this and you guys have broken this well, long story short um they sent us down a new sub and a new amp everything has been cleared up that wasn't our fault in any way that's been verified the subwoofer was dismantled by our suppliers and they had a look inside it they're not a hundred percent sure but one of them guys there thinks that the spider one of the spiders inside that subwoofer was possibly twisted or rotated just a smidgen too far or something i'm not exactly sure he didn't really explain it that well but he said possibly the spider was rotated a wee bit which meant that possibly one of the thabian wires or something going to the voice coil was in contact with the basket and no longer insulated. That's customers, I'm gonna to have to go get that. Can't remember what it was saying now. Yeah. Basically, long story short, everything got replaced, it's no worries. So we got a new amp pretty much that following day. Oh wait, you, got, you guys saw that, we got the new amp installed. And the subwoofer just came down recently. The reason it didn't come down straight away was because there was actually a stock issue. New Zealand and Australia were both very low, potentially out of that subwoofer. So that one actually came out of a prefabricated Rockford Fosgate box, but then they just put it in a T1 box for us and sent it down. And so it's all installed, it's all going. So let's uh, do some testing and listening and see what we think. See how it goes on the parcel tray situation. I might just plug my phone in to the USB cord here. That'd be gonna be the easiest way. Oh, turned off. Let's start the car, shall we? And uh, I have been running that sub in on the bench for the last few days while we've had it, because I just wanted to make sure that the uh, that the cut that the subwoofer was flexed up and ready to go in the situation, rather than it being all stiff. Because I wanted to hear what it sounded like once it was, you know, loosened up. Now I know you guys suggested I play some songs that don't have copyright on them, but I've totally forgotten to download it into my phone. Sorry. I could maybe try find some on YouTube. Oh, I can hear it now. Interesting, isn't it? Sometimes subwoofers just sound better when you swap the phase on them. That sounds better. Um, I don't know how well the microphone's going to pick it up, but what I want to try and do is demo the sound of it with the sub and then without the sub for you guys, so you can see that it does sound good. Because a lot of people were sceptical that it was actually going to make any bass on the parcel tray, and I can honestly say it makes heaps. Sounds really good. I could hear a rattling and for a minute I thought it was the woofer, but it's actually this. There's some rattling inside there. That's okay, as long as it's not the woofer. Okay, so, now I'll turn the sub off. Yeah, there's definitely a difference. Job of making nice mid bass, but um, that sub off turning on and off they just bring through the absolute sub bass and sounds great. Yeah, there absolutely is a difference 100%. Could probably turn it up just a smidge. Sub off, off. sub off, on. What's also really good is I can't hear any rattles coming from the back. I really thought there'd be more, but there isn't. So that's good. That's good. 
sounding good. I'm happy. Because a lot of you guys, I'm not having a go, but a lot of you guys were skeptical that the subwoofer on that parcel tray situation just wasn't gonna work. Like it's just straight up was not gonna make bass or it was gonna die, which is ironic, but um, or something, it just wasn't gonna work. But, and I didn't know if it was gonna work or not because I'd never done a parcel, a parcel tray free as sub before like this. So I was kind of going out on a limb and hoping it would work just seeing what happens because the customer wanted that and the good news is it does work sounds awesome i don't know if it's using the uh boot as an enclosure at all or if it's really just translating all of its vibrations into the car and that's what's creating the bass or not but either way you can hear a difference turning the subwoofer on and off and it sounds really good it's not ridiculous like the like the corvette you know it's not like spl but it's nice low-end bass which is exactly probably what he was after because these Audis are nicely sound deadened. They've got good bottom end, even in their factory situations. So I think as a replacement for the factory subwoofer on the parcel tray, that T1 Slim sub has done a really good job. Let's uh, just go back and we'll play something a bit more, what would be the word, casual as opposed to a bassy song. Play something that has bottom end, but isn't a super bassy song. Like, this should sound nice and punchy. because the subwoofer is making those sounds that you don't really realize are there until they're gone you know like I can't I'm not sitting here and just thinking shit there's so much bass coming from the back there must be a subwoofer like I sit in here and I listen to it and I think that sounds really nice and then you turn the subwoofer off and you think oh where'd half the, how, where'd half the sound go you know actually really nicely balanced it's great going good that just makes such a difference to the overall sound of the car it's amazing Oh man, I really love the way that's turned out. I gotta, okay, I'm gonna turn the car off now. Okay, well, there we go guys. The Audi now is officially done. Um, if you want to see how that subwoofer was installed and everything like that, if you wanna see some of um, how I decided to do all of that, go check out some of my other videos. I think I did about two videos surrounding that subwoofer and the sound deadening of the parcel tray. I'll put a link up at the uh, top right hand corner of the video here. So go check that out if you want to see the installation in case you guys are new and you didn't really understand what I was talking about with the amplifier and the sub dying and stuff like that. Go check those out. It was really interesting to see what happened. But um, yeah, that sounds so good. I, it's, to be, I'm going to be honest, it's not what I was expecting. I was expecting a bit more bass because when I was test, uh, running the first one and it was making shitloads. But that versus how it sounds now, I prefer it to how it sounds now. So it's actually come out better than what I was expecting it to be by actually having a little bit less bass, you know what I mean? It's just perfectly balanced with the volume of all the speakers and the bass that you can hear, you don't realize is there until it's gone. So you're not, as I said, I'm not sitting here thinking there's definitely a sub in this car. I know there is, but I wouldn't have guessed that until I turn the sub off or output off and you can hear that a whole lot of the bottom end just drops off. So that's really good. That sounds great, success. Yeah. So there we go guys, the Audi is done, finally, officially. Customer was stoked with how it sounds. So stoked with the whole job. He dropped me off a bottle of Irish whiskey. Fucking good guy. He, yeah. No, it sounded really, really good. The parcel tray mounting subwoofer idea worked actually better than I expected. And customer couldn't be happier and that's really all that matters. 
So, catching up on things that have happened recently, you guys might have seen that I put on Facebook. Deals week on now. So I put on Facebook and Patreon just recently a couple of pictures. Um, I finally, you know, just decided to knuckle down and finish off these tweeter pods. They're not, you know, by, they're not, I don't want to say finished yet, but they're like in a final stage. You know what I mean? Like, I might still finish them or upholster them differently. Mm, pardon me. But anyway, here's how they're looking. I finished sanding them, primering, all that fun stuff, and then I put a couple of coats of black paint on them, and I'm actually super happy with how it turned out with just the black paint. They look really cool. Like... They blended really well. And it's cool because this one, if you can see here, see this is directly on axis. It's looking straight at me. And so is this one. If you can see that, yeah, we go. So the tweeters are both firing straight at me. They're not mounted in there yet. I think I'm going to wait to do that when I, when I finally do the big speaker swap over to the PS165 F3. That's still a plan. It's still happening. I'm just tossing up what to do with the tweeter pods, whether to wrap them or what. I think at some point, a lot of you guys are saying I should wrap them in upholstery vinyl, like thick vinyl. I would not be able to do that. I, d I haven't had much experience with vinyl and that is an extremely complex shape. I wouldn't know how to do it without leaving cuts everywhere. So I would probably get an upholsterer to do it. Hopefully Mark over the road would have time for me, but he's a very busy man. So I don't know if that will work or not, but I'd certainly ask his opinion. The question is, do I upholster them in like vi vinyl like this, which is like kind of a le grayish leathery look, or this black dotted leather, you know? That or that. I'm gonna put a poll up in the corner and you guys can vote on how you think I should finish them. So, so loud out there. So do I finish them in A, this kind of leather vinyl, B, this dotted vinyl, C, do I leave them matte black paint or satin black paint as they are, maybe do a few more coats just to, you know, finish it up a wee bit better. So paint, D, do I wrap them in that kind of stretchy uh, decal vinyl stuff that you can buy from the auto store, you know, like like what Yenemise do to cars, the actual car vinyl stuff? Do I wrap them in that? Do I have them, now I wouldn't do it again, I'd get them professionally painted by a vehicle repairer, because there's someone we know who does that. He can probably, he can paint them and match the texture of this A pillar, make them look exactly like that. What do you guys think that would be like? Because at the moment, they're matching this pretty well, you know? It's like kind of satin black. They look exactly like it. These, this could probably do with just maybe a clear coat of clear coat to make it match this. But I could have them professionally painted in this cream textured color so that it matches. I thought that'd be quite cool. That or even this, I don't know. What, you guys just tell me what you think I should match. I'm not saying I'm gonna do exactly what wins, but I always love to hear you guys input what you think would be cool and I assess from that point. So that's what's going on with the Legacy. Very soon I want to dynamat it. It's been, and bam it, it's been taking me a long time, I know. Um, it's, everything kind of just halted on the Legacy for quite a while as soon as I got that Corvette job and then the Audi job and then I went on holiday. It's just been on the back burner a wee bit, but it's by no means finished or over. Still got to finish the tweeters, swap the speakers over to the PS165 F3, put dynamat throughout the car and bam in the doors. And then there's still a few more LEDs I have to install as well. There's a lot of things I need to do to this car. Always, it's an ongoing project. That's one great thing about having a car you can work on um, all the time, is there's always stuff you can do. But there is, it is coming. The reason I just haven't got the speakers or the Dynamite yet is because I've been kind of trying to save a wee bit of money because Jess and I, as you guys know, are engaged. We've got a wedding coming up next year. That's gonna cost a bit of money. And we also want to buy a house for ourselves another house for ourselves after that, just for us to live in without flatmates. So we're on the saving mode at the moment. And I am still spending money, but I'm trying not to spend it left, right and center quick fast. So yeah, that's what's happening. There's just not much going on at Auto Sound at the moment, not much booked in for the future, unfortunately. So hopefully after these videos, I think there's likely to be a, uh, why am I just, so there's probably likely to be more legacy content coming up in the future. Depends when I can get time to do it because I really do prefer to work on this car here at work in the bay 
but that means I'm pretty much doing it in work hours and it really depends comes down to whether or not Pat can let me or not you know maybe I'll do a QA and a soon a lot of you guys have been asking for a Q&A let me know is there anything else I wanted to catch up with you guys on it's literally so much I have to do let me have a look here I have I have actually got a list on my phone of all the shit all the stuff that I need to do to my car still project legacy okay Focal PS165 F3 upgrade that's the new front speakers stop the stereo turning off when I turn the car on when I start the car um, what it actually is it's not the accessory or anything cutting out because I even tried doing it off permanent what actually happens is the voltage in the car drops low when it starts for whatever reason and it's below the threshold of what the stereo can run off I don't think it's the car I think it's the stereo these Pioneer 8850s I think have a low voltage cutout threshold because they have got quite a lot of computing going on in them so they don't like to run on low voltage sound deadening indoors sound deadening on the floor and the wheel arches led oem style daytime running lights slash angel eyes maybe fog light bulbs need to be up uh, need to be upgraded to leds or something i need to put a quick disconnect in for my battery charger i want to illuminate my door sills maybe i need to fix my trailer plug power supply because uh, a while ago i disconnected that because i actually found they had hooked it to the trunk or the boot dome light which is just wrong so I disconnected that but I need to reconnect it to a proper power supply I had written down here wrap these trims so like around the front you've got there 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 and these trims and these are like a, a gloss carbon fi this is just like printed carbon fiber it doesn't look genuine at all it's just like a print under gloss I was thinking of maybe wrapping those in a uh, in a cream colored to match leather or no not leather vinyl you know maybe thinking about it that's like a back burner idea i need to put more leds in the rear of the door pockets under the heater we need a light down here so i can see what's under there at night and i think that's everything i've got listed so far plenty of stuff to do always going to be something to work on long story short don't worry there will always be cons as long as i can get the opportunity the time to work on it oh i still haven't painted this oh we're not started when I installed these steering wheel controls, I did it with the intent of having this panel here painted the same black as this. Because uh, unfortunately when I bought these, I couldn't get any, like, cause I bought them off eBay and in eBay it's like the American market. Whereas these black style ones are like the Japanese style market. And I couldn't get any black ones to match over this side. Cause I don't, some of you guys may not know this, but this car, if you're in, if you have watched it for a while, you'll know that this car came with the cruise control, but no audio buttons. And I was, you know, dead set on putting some in. So I ordered a kit that came from eBay that had these and then a matching silver one for this side, but it didn't have the cutouts for the SI drive. So I couldn't put that there. So this had to stay there, that had to go there. And then I planned on painting this one black because even though this is already silver like that, this has got the SI drive printed on it and I didn't want to paint over that. So that's the very complicated reason why I, why I want to paint this one black, but I want to get it done, well, I want to do it properly, you know, it's not just like a simple black coat like those things, these are like a, a very specific like charcoal metallic black sort of thing. Just something else I have to do. So much to do. Yeah, I think that's everything I need to catch up on with you guys, just basically reassuring you that there's always going to be some, you know, content and some work coming out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found the subwoofer part interesting for that Audi. I thought it sounded really good. Really, really good. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Choose to be happy and I'll catch you next time. Hopefully soon. Kakatana.